and tonight I'll be talking about binding and casting. I want to teach you about how to cast out demons, that we've been given the power and authority to do so by Jesus as we are sent out to preach the gospel, as we are sent out and these signs shall follow. We shall cast out devils. We shall speak in tongues. We'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And many different manifestations will come out of the power of God, which flows through us. In Jesus name. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. And I love to teach on the subject of deliverance because it's very much neglected in the church today. As I spoke of last week, as I talked about last week, it's very much neglected. And that's why it's one of the subjects that I love to focus on because I love to see others liberated just as I was liberated from the powers of the enemy. Hallelujah. We can have the victory in Jesus name. Please turn with me first to Matthew chapter 18, verses 18 through 20. And as you turn there, I'm just going to begin to pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your word. Lord, cleanse us, purify us, and wash us with your word. Lord, reveal to us tonight more about the greater levels of deliverance, Lord, more about how we have authority and power to cast out devils, Lord God. Give us revelation, impart to us revelation, insight, and all that we need, Lord, all that we need is being released from your anointing right now, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Give us insight into this subject and help me to speak your words and not my own, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's read from the scriptures. Matthew 18, 18 through 20. Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them. By my Father in heaven. I believe what's being emphasized is there's power in numbers. And we need to be in unity when it comes to prayer. We need to strategize in prayer. We need to intercede in prayer. And that is how we're going to see strongholds of the enemy torn down as we unite. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So there are many misconceptions when it comes to this text that we just read and regarding these verses. And I want us all to have a clear understanding on this and what it means. First Ephesians 2 6 says, We are seated with Christ in heavenly realms. We already know our authority from what was taught in the last lesson. And I hope if if you didn't view that lesson, if you didn't uh, weren't with us in that lesson, that you would go back and watch it or listen to it on the podcast or through video on YouTube or another or Facebook or another social media platform. So with that authority, this scripture is telling us that we can bind demons in the second heaven and in the earthly realm as well. And let me explain what that means. By binding them, we subdue them in the sense that they can't manifest in the way they usually do unless Jesus gives the order himself that they be loosed for a purpose. Yes, there's a purpose for demons. Just as there's a purpose for angels, there's a purpose for us, there's a purpose for demonic spirits and for the devil. They torment people. Yes, they torment people and that's a consequence of sin. Okay, they bring trials and tribulations and pain and sickness and iniqu and, and infirmity uh, upon people's lives, but God allows this at times to draw these people closer to Christ. He drew me closer to Christ by allowing certain things to happen to me, certain demons to, to oppress me and torment me until the point where I was humbled and I gave my life over completely to Jesus and fully surrendered. So don't think uh, this is without purpose. Don't think that when someone is oppressed, it's without purpose or, or if they're under uh, demonic, demonic force or demonic strongholds, there's a purpose for that, and it's to push them closer to Christ. Every time we experience pain in this life as Christians, as those who know the Lord, we're supposed to go closer to him, not become more distant. There's, there's something, you know, when you go through something, when you go through a tribulation, a trial, a, a testing in your life, a time of testing, I should say, that's going to have one of two 
uh, effects on your life. You're going to go closer to him or further away from him. A death in the family, a loss can can cause that. A divorce can cause that. Um, but we need to make a decision whether we're going to draw close to him or we're going to run away. And I'm telling you, go down to his feet, drop to his feet, just offer it all up to him. Say, Lord, I can't do this, but you can. So I'm giving it over to you so that you can see me through, that you can walk me through this process and so that you can heal my heart and make me whole in every way. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So we'll get, a, we'll get to casting out and loosing in a moment, but I want you to understand how important it is that we bind devils before we move on. When a possessed or oppressed person manifests or acts out in a demonic way with demonic influence, it can sometimes help us to discern what ty type of demon it is, what type of demonic spirit it is. But in most cases, I prefer to bind the demon or demons in a person before they have the opportunity to manifest. So what I'm saying, what I'm trying to say here is that when I step into a place that I'm about to minister in, you know, whether it be a church, whether it be someone's home, whether it be, uh, you know, the Walmart, I'm going in there and I get a sense that there's somebody that's being oppressed, somebody's manifesting or something's happening and God uh, leads me to step in and I step into that situation. Okay, usually I'm going to bind that thing right away. I'm going to say, I bind you, devil, in Jesus' name, by the power and authority of Jesus Christ. Immediately, I usually bind it the demon inside of the person or oppressing the person because if I don't, that that spirit, that demonic spirit can hurt the person or cause the person to hurt themselves. And I hope that makes sense to you. I know some of this may be new to a lot of you, but I've dealt with demons for quite some time now and have a lot of experience. And the funny thing about it is the way that I started casting out devils was really by accident. And that happens sometimes. I remember the first time where I knew uh, without a shadow of a doubt that a devil uh, came out of a person, that a demon came out of a person. And I was praying for a woman with an addiction. Uh, and she had gotten clean off drugs, but she still had the urge. She still had the compulsion to use. And she asked me to pray. And I laid a hand on her shoulder and I prayed with her. And as I was praying and I said, uh, told that addiction to go. And I said, I rebuke you in Jesus name, go anything that's behind this addiction, go. And after I got done praying, she said, you would never believe what just happened to me. You're going to think I'm nuts. I said, no, I don't think you're crazy. Just tell me what happened. You know, I've, I've seen a lot of things that I can't explain. And she says, well, I just saw this black thing come out of me and just, just take off, just run, just, just shoot right through the wall. And, uh, that's the first time that I had a confirmation that a demon came out of someone. But like I said, it kind of happened uh, by mistake, even though God doesn't make mistakes. But what I'm saying is sometimes you're just going to be ministering. Sometimes you're just going to be going through what God's leading you to do and devils are going to come out. So I want to before moving on, I want to say there's no formula to this whatsoever. There's no formula to this, but I'm going to break it down so you can be protected when you're do, doing deliverance and so that you don't fall into some of the traps of the enemy that he sets along the way as you're ministering. So I've heard of all kinds of stories from other deliverance ministers having to do with demonized people attacking the minister or bystanders or the, de or the demonized person har harming themselves or hurting someone. And I want to tell you this, that I heard a story once, uh, an eyewitness testimony from the person this happened to, but they were so possessed at this point. They were involved in the occult. They were so possessed that when they were at this church, they ended up getting saved, but they were so possessed and the, the pastors and the leaders didn't know how to deal with it, that the man that got saved ended up coming up for the altar call and and picked up the pastor by his throat and lifted him up in the air and began to attack him. So this is another reason, I, and I'm not trying to incite fear whatsoever at all in you. Actually, it's quite the contrary. I want you to be confident and bold in your authority, but I want you to be equipped because if something like that happens in your church and you're not prepared for it, plenty of people can be harmed or even killed. So we need to know our authority. We know need to know how to exercise 
our authority as well. So when I walk into a place where I'm ministering or any place I sense demonic activity, I say out loud, I bind every demonic principality and power of darkness operating in this place in the name of Jesus and by the po power and authority of Jesus. So now, now please turn with me to Matthew chapter 12, verse 29. Matthew chapter 12, verse 29. And it says this, or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man? So Jesus is attempting to reason with the Pharisees here who are accusing him of casting out demons by Beelzebub. That, this is in context if you go through and read the entire thing. Who, if you don't know, uh, is a high-ranking demon or principality, Beelzebub is. What Jesus says here in so many words is that if he's a principality, then there's no way that he could cancel his own assignments. Why would he send his own foot soldiers off the battlefield? That's a great question. Why would he send them away if he was Beelzebub or if he was acting in the power of the enemy, if he was moving in the power of the enemy? He says, in fact, you need to bind the strong man before you plunder his house. If you're looking to liberate your region, the strong man must be bound in your region and his power broken. That's something we'll address a little bit later in this series as I talk about principalities and powers of darkness. And I would say if you're just getting started with deliverance, don't start by praying against principalities or even binding them like I just talked about. I would say I bind you, devil, in Jesus' name. I, that's a simple command that you can give. You can bind a demon by simply saying I bind you. I bind every demonic force in this house in this area in this region in this church by the power and authority of jesus christ i would start out there the devil and his demons aren't stupid except when they become blinded by their own pride and their lust for what they can't have like salvation they can't have salvation salvation has only been offered to human beings demons and the devil know exactly where they're going to go and that's why they hate to hear about it. They hate to hear about the blood. They hate to hear about salvation because they cannot attain it. They cannot have it. So most of the time they have a tried and tested strategy. Why do I say tried and tested? Because they've been trying it and testing it from the beginning of mankind. From the time of Adam and Eve, Satan has been deceiving people. Don't be one of them. Don't be one that the enemy deceives, but receive truth and believe the truth of the gospel. So Jesus makes it clear that casting out demons is something that can only be done with kingdom authority. The only reason they accused him to begin with was because of their jealousy, because they couldn't do what he was doing. They couldn't perform the miracles he was performing. They couldn't rebuke and cast out devils like the way he was doing it. Now let's move on to loosing. Again, remember that we're seated in heavenly places with Christ. The kingdom dwells within us because Jesus dwells within us. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. So we have the power to lose supernatural peace and virtue here on earth, among other things. We have the power to lose the virtue of God. We have access to the power of God in such a way that we can ask Jesus to loose the host of heaven and they will come to defend us. They will come to minister to us and to strengthen us. We partner with God's spirit daily, but don't forget that we're also partnering with angels as we minister and live out our lives. Whatever we loose or bind here on earth will directly influence the second heaven where angels and devils are engaged in warfare. Pray, preach, and prophesy. Bind devils and loose the powers of the kingdom that strongholds may be broken and territories may be filled with the glory of God. Now, when it comes to casting a devil out, you must speak with authority, actually believing that the evil spirit will flee. You can't just say, oh, well, you know, get out of here. No, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. You got to say it with some authority. 
And it's not about speaking in the flesh. It's not about yelling and screaming. If there's no anointing on it, if there's no Holy Spirit in it, it's not going to work. If there's no faith in it, it's not going to work. You need to speak with boldness and authority, knowing who you are in Christ. You can say something like, Jesus rebukes you, or I command you to flee by the power and authority of my Lord Jesus Christ again. Let me reiterate that. So there may be a time when these kinds of commands aren't working. And that's most likely because the unclean spirit has a right to be on that person or in that person because of a curse or a generational curse. There's different kinds of curses. So there are also things that can come into play like like witchcraft and the occult as well. It's important to ask the Holy Spirit to lead you in discerning what kind of curse or legal right is active in this person's life as you're ministering, as you're praying, as you're you're discerning the atmosphere, the climate, and all those kinds of things. So after discerning the issue, we should have them renounce anything that may have led them into that state. Some of the things they might renounce depending on what they identify with are witchcraft, the occult, idolatry, sexual perversion, lying, alcoholism, demon or demonic oaths, um, or covenants, or any other sinful act that could have opened the door to this kind of oppression or possession, this kind of demonization. With someone who's been delivered multiple times from the same spirit, I usually say something like this, I rebuke you in Jesus' name, devils, flee and do not return to this person. They're covered by the precious blood of Jesus So on my next deliverance training, I'm going to be speaking more about breaking curses. I'm going to go more into detail on that. I'm going to talk about legal rights. When the enemy has a legal right to your life or to your bloodline, I'm going to talk about breaking curses and generational curses. And that's something that we all need to know. It's and, and for example, when someone's an alcoholic and their father was an alcoholic and their grandfather was an alcoholic and their great great grandfather was an alcoholic, there's something more to that than just the flesh. There's something more to that than just a pull in your flesh or a temptation. There's usually a demon that's enforcing a curse that's active in that person's life when that continues on from generation to generation. And we're going to deal with those things. We're going to talk about those things in the next session. Now, let me just pray over you for those of you who need to get free right now. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that you release supernatural joy, and I just loose supernatural joy over your lives right now in Jesus' name. I loose supernatural peace over your life in Jesus' name right now. Hallelujah. I bind and rebuke every demonic force, every demon listening right now in Jesus' name. You must flee and not return to each and every person that's watching right now, that's listening to this right now. Kita ramba bashito rambasi, sindo rambashi to rombo kota rabashi. As the Holy Spirit moves and fills your body that fills your spirit as the spirit as his spirit fills your spirit as his spirit moves into your household as his spirit moves into your car or apartment or wherever you are make room for the holy spirit make room i bind every jezebel spirit every python spirit every spirit of depression every spirit of fear every spirit of confusion i bind you devils i bind every demonic force that's operating in these people's lives in their families in their households in their businesses in their ministry and i say go now in jesus name break off pain go in jesus name hallelujah cancer spirit of cancer i break your power in jesus name by the power of the precious blood of jesus Hallelujah. Loose wholeness, Lord. Loose wholeness. Bring them into wholeness, mind, body, soul, and spirit right now in Jesus' name. I believe many have received deliverance through this message. Receive Jesus. Believe on him. Believe that he is Lord. Believe that he died on the cross for your sins. Confess your sins. Repent of your sins. Turn away from your sins and begin to follow Jesus. Keep your eyes to the skies and your hands to the plow. God bless you.